Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Kenny Pickett, Thursday Night Football, big win over the Titans. Come from behind, fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room for the Quarterback School Patreon community. This is all about nuance, detail, depth, about not only the quarterback position, but high-level offense and defensive structure systems, philosophy, everything you can imagine. Hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Kenny Pickett, the Steelers, finding a way to get it done right here. Third down, we're going to hit the shallow. Coming from top to bottom. Third down, first down, let's go, Kenny Pickett. 19 for 30 for 160 and a touchdown. Doing just enough. So, this to me is a nice illustration of kind of a bunch of what I would classify as potential deficiencies for this offense. So whatever this read is, here's where the route ends up going. We're going to call that a shallow or drive. Now, I know I talk a lot about this on the channel, but I'm going to reiterate it here. In a shallow and a drive, universally, if it is zone, you want to run over here, not look at the quarterback, so you're running looking this way and settle up in that space. You do not want to keep running into a zone defender because that is how you get decapitated. So that's the first part. If there's a zone defender out here, zone defender, doesn't matter what it is, zone player, do not run to get covered. Don't keep running over here. Just run over here and settle down. And once you settle down, then you look at the quarterback. When that isn't the case, so when there is a zone defender standing out here, doesn't matter who it is, flat defender zone, cloud corner, and you run over here and keep running, the quarterback is not going to lead you. He's going to protect you, hopefully, and throw it behind you so that you have to stop and you don't run into a collision. And it's just, to me, it's a visual evidence of just kind of the bad understanding of how to do passing offense. You see the guy run and look here? So as he's running that shallow across, He's running and looking right there. It's zone. Don't run. And you can see the throw is behind him. And you, many people probably think, dude, just put it out in front of him. You can't put it out in front of him. He's going to get crushed. So it's just, it's bad offense, but it results in a first down. So this is the type of like evidence you look for when you're like, you know, they're winning. We have a winning record. You know, we're not getting a lot of yards. Why aren't we getting a lot of yards? Well, we can't even do this type of stuff right. Next one here, another example of what I would classify as bad ball, bad offense, many different layers here. Okay, so the first part is that it looks like it's an RPO. Pickett goes to throw it with the nickel pressure. No one's there. He then throws it away. We've got most likely eligible, ineligible guys down the field penalty. <laughs> okay, so that in and of itself, bummer. Reflection of, again, bad offense. Now, I think it gets actually worse when you peel it back even farther. Here. So let's talk through kind of the penalty element of this, what's going on, why it's a bad play. So first part here that I like, watch the back, shift. Then we're going to get motion. So we've been asking for more movement in this offense. Yes, please. Now at the snap, kind of the, the major issue here is that we're going to have nickel pressure. He's going to come off the edge. It looks like we're going to classify this as an RPO run with a pass option. Okay, so the pass option is Kenny Pickett pulling it, and it looks like he wants to throw it here or out to the number one. Well, guess what? No one's looking. No one's looking. It's a disaster. Now we've got to essentially think we're going to go make a play. We end up trying to just throw it away, but because we've got all these guys down the field in the blocking unit, they're past a yard down the line of scrimmage. It's a penalty. That's the bad part, and, and this is the major bad part. Coming off the edge, nobody looking. Okay, now we'll get into the even, it gets worse when you get into the run blocking unit. Now, what is this run play? I can't tell you. You know, I might probably classify it as like a double G. I'm, I'm going to guess that they don't block it correctly. 
So we're going to have both guards go. So the guard, the right guard is kicking out the end, the right defensive end, or I guess the left, left defensive end. You're a defensive person. So we're going here. That's the G part of it for me. Now, normally, if you're going to live in this world where you're going to go down G, I would say this block universally is going to be down and then up. That That's just me, you know. But how they block it is they're going to go G and then trap here. I don't understand. Then we're going to go both these two to here. <laughs> don't understand. Here, up on the backside, and then essentially we're like, leaving the C-gap defender on the backside, and it's a plus two because the nickel's blitzing as well. This, not correct. So we're having earmuffs here, okay, earmuffs. We're having fuck-ups on both sides, and then the quarterback fucks up also by throwing it away. It just You can't have three fuck-ups like this in the NFL. <laughs> Come on, dog. Like, this is not acceptable. C stop. Stop it. Next one here, first and 15, we're going to throw a number one up top, what I'm going to call a spray hook. And we're going to spray that thing right over his head into the front row. This is a big miss. And I don't mean big like it really matters because it doesn't really matter. But it's a wide miss for an NFL quarterback. For a starting NFL quarterback. To me, this is essentially routes on air. So the spray element is the stem for me. You call it whatever you want. It's just outward. And to me, that is a hook. At the top of this thing, most teams are going to have you come right back to the quarterback. Many times you can get lined up and anticipate this throw, but this throw, and I'll pause it when he's at the top, is open, open, open in the NFL. We, You can't miss these types of throws, and you certainly can't miss them so high that the wide receiver can't even touch it. I mean, he doesn't even reach for it, y'all. <laughs> he doesn't reach for it. That's open. What? And again, you know, it doesn't look like it's pouring rain. I didn't watch the first half of this on the broadcast, but it doesn't look like it's, you know, a huge weather issue. We've got gloves on. I mean, it's <laughs> it's one of those things where like it's almost not even like trying it worth it to like break it down. It misses so wide. I, I just don't understand how you can miss that hot what? He doesn't even reach for it. Look at him play. <laughs> what? Damn. Next one here, one of my favorite throws of the, of the night, third and two. We're going to throw what I'm going to call a corner down here to the bottom or deep out. This play is going to be read right to left and versus a cloud corner. This is a beautiful throw from Kenny Pickett. So to miss the previous one by so much, but then to come back on third and two here and drop a much harder throw down the field, up on his face, that's a beautiful throw on a big-time situational down and distance. I love throwing it past the sticks as well. So what is this play? This play is just the number one to the bottom is running what we're going to call a corner or a deep out. It really doesn't matter. That. We're going to run a flat by the number two. We're going to have a half field safety right here and a cloud corner, just a flat defender rolled up corner. So you just read this corner. He cannot be right. If he gets depth, you put it on the flat. If he hangs where he is right here, low, then we're going to have a big window to be able to rip this corner or deep out. So if these guys aren't here, then we've got a shallow coming across and an in or a basic. So just right to left. And again, this is, I'm not, it's not an easy throw. This is a big time throw on third and two. I love the fact that we're throwing it past the sticks. He makes his read. Now, I think if you wanted to get into the minutia, the details of kind of the footwork that he's playing with, to me, there's still wasted movement. We're drifting to the right. It works out here because there's no pressure. But again, I mean, you look where he's throwing that thing. He's throwing that thing over the guard. One, two, three. Moving, 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 moving. Now, it's fine when no one's rushing you or they don't get home. But man, that's a beautiful throw. Big time hookup. Let's go. Next one here, third and eight. They're going to dial up old school shallow cross. People always freak out on me about this, especially the old cats. About, why don't you like shallow cross? Shallow cross is awesome. Used to run it back in the day with Bill Walsh. The reason why shallow cross is not great, in my opinion, is because of verse man coverage. You only have one runaway. Okay, so verse man coverage, I want as many runaways as possible. Right here, here's the shallow cross. Again, we've already talked about the rules. Man to man, you keep running. Zone, you can settle up. 
Okay, this is man to man, so we got to keep running. That's your only runaway. Everything else is here is a deep hook, usually a deeper hook, and then it's usually paired with a post, like a quarter zero alert post. So you don't have any runaway opportunities. We're going to catch man, gobbled up, gobbled up, not going to throw it versus middle field closed right here, gobbled up. So you've got one opportunity. Now, is the route better than the throw? Yes. <laughs> okay, we can't sky mail this. And we keep sky mailing all these routes. It's, you know, it's really tough to play quarterback in the league when you're missing routes by this much. You know, look at the reaction from 14. Look, look at the reaction. Look at the body language. Look at the head lean. I mean, look at he's got coaches coming over and like hitting him in the head, like, you'll be all right, dog. Like, come on, that's not on you. you no know, shit, it's not on me. It's not even close to being caught. <laughs> Again, he can't even reach for it. But look where everything else is. Look, look at the deep hook over the ball. Nothing. You know, maybe you put it on him and he bodies him up. Up top, how about the curl up top or hook up top? Nothing. Post down here, nothing. Play sucks versus man coverage. It's not just my issues. It's everybody's issues with man coverage and shallow cross. It's tough. I don't know what to tell 14 here. You know, I'll, I'll get you next time. You know, if anything, pocket-wise here from Peckett, I think he does have to get up in the pocket. You just would love to, like, reset and kind of, like, calm yourself before you throw this. It looks like he's, like, firing pistons with his feet. Like, <laughs> like it feels tight and tense. Like, ee! like you're, you're right there. You can see the body language. He knows he should make this throw. But again... It's not just a miss, okay? I missed many throws in my life. Many, many throws, <laughs> okay? So don't get it twisted. I'm not coming from that kind of spot. I'm saying the type of miss, this wide of a miss, that's not a far throw. To miss that much to that big of a target on third down when he's running away, it's going to be a big hit. It's going to be pump or turn right. It just it, it zaps the energy of a team. Next one here, third and eight. We're going to rip the number three up top. Running right down the middle of the field for split field coverage. Great read. It is a great play by number two. Don't get it twisted. I didn't go back and watch the broadcast, but it sure looks like he hits this with his, with his hand on the other version. I didn't put it on this video because we're an offensive video, but pretty sure he hits it with his hand right there. Blind right-handed hits it or left-handed hits it. Awesome. It's an awesome play by two. And, okay, and we run out of club. He's got him, linebacker type, trying to run with a NFL wide receiver versus split field coverage, and he gaps him, right? Like he's by him here. There is a separation between these two. We just run out of club. It's just the arm, the arm talent is not maybe what you know the top half of the league is. Now, it's not an easy throw. Okay, don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm not saying it's an easy throw. We've got guys right in our lap, right in our face. We can't get through the throw. And... A stronger arm, a bigger arm, more arm talent. Got a chance for a massive play here. Again, I'm, that's not an easy throw. Nothing about that is an easy throw. And man, if we just put it out there a little bit farther, if we could keep him in stride, if he didn't slow down and have to come back and slide, it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. So, you know, this is the difference. And it's not... Yes, it's just my opinion, but I'm describing the film. If you disagree with the film, if you don't think it's a touchdown, you don't think it's underthrown, if you don't think the arm strength is an issue. And again, I'm watching the film. I see him get blasted. I know that there's guys in his face. I know he can't follow through. Welcome to playing quarterback in the NFL. Not easy. So close, though, to being a massive big-time throw. Next one here, third and 11. This one will make you sick, man. This is... Can't miss a lot of touchdowns like this. We're going to end up missing what I'm going to call as a post to the number two up top. This to me is a stump beater. It's essentially a bracket beater, and I'll show you exactly what we're talking, what I'm talking about when we watch it again from the wide. But it's really sick because the number three, 83, probably scores two. So he's not looking at 83. He's looking off there, or he's looking to the bottom of the screen. Whatever he's doing, if he's looking to the bottom of the screen, to me he doesn't quite understand what this concept is up top if he's trying to go 
read whatever's to the bottom of the screen. There's nothing, there's nothing to read. 14 is jogging, running like a slow motion post. That ain't it either. To me, he looks a little confused about where his eyes should be. So again, now I'm going to talk about exactly what this play is. And uh, this is not, you know, coverage 101. This is complex bracket coverage. To me, this is just double post. This is a stump beater. Okay, to me, what stump is is an iteration of cover seven or bracket for a lot of people. At the end of the day, what that means is that we're going to have off coverage one-on-one -on -one outside. So we don't have to worry about those. That's one-on-one -on -one outside off. What we're going to worry about are these three defenders over these two defenders or two offensive eligibles. Okay, it's a three-by-one coverage. Now, I'm going to make the argument that one of these players is in the wrong with their leverage. One either need the safety either needs to be inside or the inside backer needs to be inside and the safety needs to be outside. So someone's in the wrong here because this shouldn't be there initially. Someone should be have it covered up. So at the end of the day, because the leverage is wrong, it really doesn't matter. Both of them go here. At the end of the day, you can think of this as this guy has the vertical of number three right here. So when he goes to the slant, he's going to be over the top of that. Once that's the case, it essentially is one-on-one -on -one right here. So he's going to be up into the post. And because this safety is covering the number three vertical, you're going to have this window right here. So again, let me say that again and simplify it. I felt myself getting complicated there. These three have these two. This safety right here has the vertical of number three. So once he comes into it right there and closes that door, you know immediately that you're going to have this for a touchdown. Now, what you can't do is skip a stone one yard into the end zone. High back five right here, touchdown. You, th this is, you have to be able to do this to play quarterback in the NFL, to be on an NFL roster for a long time. This is an easy one. That, that's as that's as easy as it gets in the NFL red zone. Now, you could make the argument, and I would agree with you, hey, 11, run faster. Don't shorty, shorty your stride at the top of that route. You know, and if he's supposed to have an in route, well, then that's on him. But that sure looks like double post. You know, it looks like if I had to, you know, just without knowing Kenny Pickett's fundamentals, it looks like he gets really wide. And that's as wide as you'll see anybody in the league playing. Get wide, thing dies on you, sinker, miss touchdown. Just fucking brutal. Just brutal. So again, you can see the leverage on 83, right? To me, either red sleeve is misaligned, or I guess the 37 is probably misaligned. He should probably be inside leverage of him, not stacked. See how those guys are stacked? Red sleeve, blue sleeve. So you have 83 there. If you were looking to the right, and not looking off to the left, you'd see 83 and put it on him. But both of those guys cover him. Right behind him, sinker. Damn. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for taking the time to do that. I appreciate you. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel, the best of the best. These are detailed, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have a course on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system over there. So if you enjoy how I talk and teach ball, you will love the quarterback school courses. Hop over there. The link is in the video description and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources also linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and three from the 12. We're going to throw inside fade to my guy number 14. You know, it's hard to put anything here on Kenny Pickett or Canada. They can't make 14 get his feet in. This is the NFL. Now, could you throw it in bounds a little bit more? Sure, 100%. But I mean, that's way in bounds. <laughs> you got to get your other foot in there, guy. You can't not know where you are on the field. This one hurts. This is a bummer. That's way too easy. <laughs> you can easily drag your foot there. 
That's just lazy, sloppy wide receiver play. And usually in the NFL, this shit will get you beat. You know, sure, I'd love to see Kenny Pickett make it easier, but y'all, come on. Come on, 14. You, you got to help us out here. This just, to me, it's just a total lack of attention to detail about your understanding, about your football IQ, to be able to know where you are on the field. That's so easy. It's so like nonchalant, like, oh, la, 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 la. I just stepped out of bounds. Bro, you have a, you have way over a yard to get your foot in. I'm not saying it's an easy catch. We could make it an easier catch and throw, but it's certainly good enough. It's good enough, bold, underlined. That is just disgusting. But we turn it around in the fourth, third and three, bottom of the screen. We're going to run what I'm going to call a stop route down here to the bottom versus two invert. This is a hell of a throw. I'm not sure exactly how he gets this thing done. Originally, I thought it was a quick out. It's a beautiful throw. Red Sleeves does everything he can except touch it. Now, coverage-wise here, certainly a little funky. We're third down. You're going to see all sorts of exotic stuff in the league. A double mug up here. They're going to end up getting to what I'm going to call two invert. All that really means is that it's Tampa 2, but the corners are now the half-field players. And we get the normal kind of flat defender buzzing out from the side here. So we're going to buzz out, buzz out, and then what I'm going to call the stop route down here. Up, and the ball location is so perfect. It's away from the outstretch reach of red sleeves that he's got no chance to get it. I mean, he's got a chance. He just doesn't get it. <laughs> it's a little bit living on the edge. But when you throw a strike like this, it looks beautiful. I mean, right? Like, that's a dangerous-ass throw. But he's decisive. His foot goes in the ground. He's lined up. Precise away from the near defender. That's a nice third down conversion, y'all. That's really nice. Versus a really exotic look. Double mug, run out. You know, I personally like the dovetail of this drop. So he's kind of lined up to throw it. Look at all his cleats in the ground. Ripping it right where he wants. Look at that outstretched arm. <laughs> Whoa. Next one here, third and six. Big play up top. We're going to hit a go. Nice job. Middle field close. Press man. He wins. Ball's right on him. Just a massive play on third down. This is a big time throw. Bold. You know, courageous. If it wasn't there, they're having mesh. So first, watch that release up top. Best release. Wins outside. Ball gets up and down before the safety can go make a play. If anything, I'd say it's one of like a flatter go ball or flatter fade type throw. So if you're going to do this, great. You better hit it. So right here, win, he gets him. Great. The reason I like it is because it's middle field closed with press coverage. You got to take your chances. If it wasn't there, they're going to run mesh. Deep hook, mesh over the top. And then we've got my guy 14 coming across. Nice job setting it up. And then he's coming out right here. So kind of like this alert, if you like it, one right here versus man, and it's got a chance to be punt return right. So to me, this is an example. Okay, so don't freak the hell out. I'm not friends with Kirk or Canada. This is really nice offense. You take a shot, you hit it. If it wasn't there, are there other people that are open, that are winning on mesh? Yes, 14. That's a big chunk to 14 right there. That is good offense. This is evidence of good offense. Let it wash over you. Enjoy good offense. You can see 14 coming across, right? He's under. He does a great job setting him up. That's going to be a big hit. Now, you have to hit it. But, like, let's assume he can hit it. Nice throw right in the pocket. Massive play. Hell yes. Last one here ends up being the game-winning touchdown. We're going to run a banjo killer up top. To me, it's a switch-switch release. And what I mean by that is we're going to switch once at the line of scrimmage to jack with the coverage, and then we're going to have leverage on both routes that we want. And so I'll talk through exactly what that means. Banjo coverage to me means, it's just you can call it whatever the hell you want. It's these two are going to go in and out on these two. So wh wh however they want to sort this thing out. So he's going to have the first one inside, first one outside is the easiest way to think of it. So offensively, what they do here that I love is they switch release it immediately. So once they switch release it, these defenders are locked. Okay, so let me say that again. These guys switch release this. So now the number one here, this is the number one, this is the number two going inside out. When he switch releases this, he is essentially running this flat off this player who has inside leverage versus him. 
So he's going to be able to come up and then come out of this thing. He's got inside leverage. He's got the leverage he wants to run to the flat. So that's the touchdown. The what we'll call a slant off the switch release by the number two. He's coming up. Now he's going to run a slant. Guess what? He's got outside leverage. Y'all, this is good offense. Versus zero. There's nobody back there. You got multiple opportunities for winners. This is a banjo beater. You're welcome. Switch, 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 switch. There it is with a little rub too. So both of them win on leverage. It's awesome offense. And you get a little rub on 24. Hell yes. Don't miss a layup right on his face. Hell yes. This is good offense. Thank you. Yes, please. More of this, please. I love it. Nice win. So that is a wrap. Kenny Pickett, the Steelers, finding a way to win. You know, the reality is it's just not my type of quarterback play, my type of offense. I don't think it's a lot of people's types of offense, if I'm being honest. But you have to admire the fact that they keep finding ways to win these games. I actually think that the plan and the kind of opportunity for guys to be open in this was as good as I've seen this year. I thought Kenny sprayed a bunch of balls, missed some balls, but he also made some plays. So it's the kind of consistently inconsistent vibe that is just really hard to survive in the league playing week in and week out when that is just kind of what we're putting on film every single week. Now they're finding a way to win these games again, by far the most important thing. But when you look at the film, you pull it apart, you analyze it, you try to make sense of it. I thought there were the opportunity for better offense in this game with the plan, the play calling, the structure, than maybe the output. And that's never a good sign for a quarterback. So just trying to make sense of it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next. I will see you next time. Have a good one.